and welcome to Whose Line Is It Anyway? And tonight we're looking forward to more than our fair share of fun, interest, excitement and entertainment. Uh, but first we must record the programme and on this week we have from America Mike McShane, a very talented writer, comedian, actor and winner of the Southern California All Comers Cyril Smith Lookalike Contest. <laughs> From the comedy store players, Josie Lawrence, who on previous weeks has demonstrated her astounding singing, acting and ad-libbing abilities. Tonight, I'm sure, she'll be moving on to piano playing, juggling and unicycling. Next, Tony Slattery, who has also made several appearances in this show, which have led to an immediate success for him in the form of an appearance on this week's show. And finally, John Sessions, a man of many parts, most of which he'll be using in the course of the programme tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the contestants. <laughs> right. Now, the first game is called Authors, so if the contestants could come down to the um, authorised position for that, uh, they've got to come along with the style of a famous author in mind. Give them the title in just a moment of a story to tell. Uh, but, Mike, uh, what's the name of your author? Uh, Louis L'Amour. Louis L'Amour, sort of uh, Western pulp writer, that pulp kind of thing, yes. Uh, Josie? The Brothers Grimm, fairy the tales. Brothers Grimm fairy tales, yes. Those Brothers Grimm, right? And Tony? Uh, my author is Dr Alex Comfort, who wrote the best-selling Joy of Sex. Yes. <laughs> What an unusual choice for you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, John? William Faulkner. William Faulkner, right back on solid ground there. Now, a title for a story for those authors to tell. I went to the toilet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your private life doesn't really concern us, but can we, can we have a, a usable title for those authors to tell? Night of the Crumpet. Sorry? Night of the Crumpet. Night of the Crumpet. <laughs> We're in charge of the public here. It's all improvised. As that very bad title demonstrates. Now, let's start with you, uh, Mike. Roadkill, Texas was a lawless town, but it had one baker, Tex Amerstein. He was the best baker in all of Roadkill, but he had a problem. He'd run out of whole wheat flour, and that made him a dangerous man. <laughs> one night when Tex lay in bed, a little elf called Putitzel landed on his bedside table. If you want to get some wheat flour, you have to journey many, many, many miles to the land where the night of the crumpet lives. The elf was little, but of course size doesn't matter. <laughs> the verification of the delineation of the hope of the answer to the ding-dong, bing-bang, bash of hope coming down now deeper into the forest of his resourcefulness. Down there into the sanctuary, the butter dripped fall, fall down into the crumpet, the crumpet falling lower and lower, driving deeper into the south, the Yachnap atop a county of her deep deliberateness, the butter dipping, dipping, dripping, and deeper and deeper. Check. <laughs> Check said enough of this crappy little fairy. Draw spatulas and let's bake. <laughs> So he popped open his camper oven, and, and they went at it. Well, the little fairy was quick, but not quick enough. Tex whipped out a couple of the best-tasting crumpets that he ever seen in his life, smeared some honey buck jelly on it, and passed it to him. He said, put that on for size, you pointy-eared little fruit. <laughs> this made the elf very angry. So he decided to lock the baker up in an ivory tower. One night, the knight of the crumpet came and shouted, Baker, baker, let down your crumpets. <laughs> he climbed up the juicy, buttery crumpets and dropped inside where he saw the baker all alone, sitting there very sad. When are you going to buzz this? <laughs> yes, the baker was alone, and there's nothing wrong with solitary sexual experience either. <laughs> let me tell you, in terms of... <laughs> The toast was rising now, rising now higher and higher into the hope of happiness. Down now, down again into the sanctuary, the deep voluptuous sanctuary of his lechery. There inside the hope denying, the hope reliving again, revivifying all hope in the answer to the improbability of the indefatigable hope of the answer of the improbable. The butter would come and down would go the toast and Holy Ghost and all. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's it. Um... Well, well, I'll give uh, give 15 points every report from Tony Slattery. I'll give two. Because, uh, <laughs> size isn't everything. Now, the next um, the next game is called Film and Theatre Styles. They divide into pairs for this game, and we start with Josie and Mike. So, can you come forward? 
Uh, in film and theatre styles, I'm going to give them a situation to improvise in in just a moment. <coughs> but we'd like a list of film and theatre styles that we can switch into. So, can anyone got any suggestions for a... Film noir. Sorry? Film noir. Film noir. I think we have had that before, but why not? Sorry? Star Wars. Russ Meyer. I don't think we've had that. Russ. Doctor Russ Who? Um, one more, maybe. Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> oh, Gilbert and Sullivan fan. We've got... Or was it another style you were demonstrating? <laughs> Clap films or something. What could that be? I don't know. So, what we th oh, so the situation uh, is, I'd like to start with one of you is a wife who is <laughs> trying to murder her husband. So um, one of you is a wife, one of you is a husband, and that's the situation for you. Just do it as normal for the bidding, and then I'll come in with a, a style in a moment. I've made a cup of tea for you, dear. Oh, good. Where are my razor blades? <laughs> oh, your razor blades? Uh, oh, you run out. They were all blunt. I went to the chemist and got some more. Oh, good. You Thank better you. drink your tea while it's still hot. <laughs> oh, there it is! How I spilled it in the sink? Excuse me. <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> Never mind, dear. Come and have some stew. It's lovely stew. It's got beautiful powdered, go beautiful pieces of beef in it. Mm. Russ Meyer. Sure, I like beef. Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when I picked you up at that damn truck stop... Down Tell me there, about it, Big Daddy. Oh, <laughs> you passion flower, I'm going to pull your stamens and mount your pistols till you fire off everything, baby. Let's get on my Harley here and ride and go on a tri-state murder spree that's never happened before. Yes, why don't you get on your bike but watch the brakes down? <laughs> Film noir. Cigarette? Thanks. I took the cigarette daintily from the case. It was silver, with the head of a wolf on the top of it, with his mouth still open. Inside that was the lighter. Here, let me light it for you. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, I felt very warm. <laughs> Pain coursing up my body. Suddenly, I felt like a Buddhist monk. I felt like going in the lotus position, but that wasn't good enough. Baby, you can put me on fire, but you can't stomp me out. You're not the kind of woman for it. What I need is a real woman. And so, burning like the night of the pestle himself, I went into the bar. Uh, well, it should be Doctor Who. We better make it Star Wars. Do... <laughs> hubby, hubby, hubby Wan Kenobi, please forgive me. <laughs> I didn't mean to set you on fire. I don't want to kill you. It's the people inside my head from the planet Ahar. The planet Eha, full of the many fish-headed people that have come to this planet to suck up all the salt out of the sea. I know they've been controlling your brain. They have been controlling my brain. My brain, my life, even my lipstick. Look. <laughs> Quickly, let me draw my pork saber. <laughs> okay, let's end on Gilbert and Sullivan. That's a mighty fine lipstick case you have, a mighty fine case indeed. Oh, husband, thank you very much. Come sit. Will you, will you, will you? I don't mean to kill you, kill you, kill you. I don't mean to kill you. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. No, I don't. Why is the Doberman in my bed? He's going to kill me and break my head. <laughs> that is true. Okay. I don't mean to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> All right. Um, yes. Very, very good. And for the first time, I'm able to award the maximum 83 and a half marks for that particular <laughs> improvisation.